this is from Venom Vlog. Nicely done, Venom Vlog. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. This is episode 376, and we are going to conclude the graphic novel called Venom, Along Came a Spider. We've been reviewing this book all week, or discussing it, I should say. I don't really do reviews on this channel for the most part. I mean, sometimes movies every now and again, or if it's like requested. But for the most part, I like to have discussions, because sometimes I get things wrong. Uh, so I feel like if you're doing a review, you should be more clear and, you know, precise. And sometimes I know I make mistakes. So early on, I decided not to really do reviews, but more like have discussions discussions about the events that happen in some of these comic books as we go through the history of Venom. And I can't wait, you know, one day, a couple years from now, maybe a year from now or two years from now, uh, we will finish all of the comic book stuff of Venom and we will have captured his entire 30 year run uh, plus at that point because we'll probably keep going every time new books come out, uh, but at least his past and his history we'll have captured we'll have almost a definitive, probably the only version of it out there, um, you know, especially on YouTube where it's a full, you know, in-depth breakdown of his entire history, every version of Venom, everyone who wore the symbiote, everything like that. Um, but yeah, even at the end, I think we're going to go back and squeeze in the time Peter Parker was in the black suit too, because we didn't really talk about that. We went right into Eddie Brock when the show started, and then we've moved forward to Matt Gargan. Now we're back with Eddie Brock, and then after this, we go to Flash Thompson, and then Lee Price, and then back to Eddie Brock again. Um, and we've been doing that, jumping around all, all kind of ways. So I'll do a playlist, and I'll put all of these comic discussions in order of uh, of their continuity order when they came out um, so when they printed so not maybe like in pure continuity because that would like kind of shuffle things around a little bit but at least in release order I'll make a full playlist so that way any you know one day from now when this show is you know a past episode five or six hundred uh, we'll have a playlist where you can go back and just watch the comic stuff and find out the full history in like you know a hundred videos of Venom uh, which will be pretty cool and any future writers of the character out there you know hopefully it'll be good research and, and homework for you so anyway so what we're doing today is we're talking about Venom the Hunger which is the final miniseries in this you know, graphic novel. Uh, and again, I'm saying that now as of 2019, uh, July 26th, that is uh, basically the only format this story is in is in a graphic novel called Along Came a Spider. I don't know if one day they'll ever reprint it and put it in another version or another book or whatever, uh, but for right now, that's the version that's out there, and I think you can buy it digitally at Comixology if you want to pick up the single issues there. So uh, Venom the Hunger was written, uh, written by Len Kaminsky, who we have talked about before on the show. He's written a, he was writer of Iron Man uh, during the Iron Man versus Venom episode that we did. So he wrote, you know, Iron Man episode or issue 301, 302, and those were two issues that Venom appeared in and fought Iron Man. And we went over those episodes or issues at least on this show. So um, yeah, so that's, uh, we, you know, we've, we're kind of familiar with some of his writing. And in this one, he's coming back to write a Venom miniseries. And this is a really interesting one. I got to say, I think Ted Halstead, is the artist. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his uh, his name. I think it's Ted Halstead. And uh, I don't know too much about Ted's work outside of this miniseries, but he kills it, I think, in this miniseries. He does some really interesting things. He definitely, this comes across as a horror story. It does have action in it. I would say this is almost as close as the movie is paced. Like, as far as the movie goes, it kind of has, like, goofy, silly moments and silly humor in it. Um, it has, like, kind of a little bit of touch on that body horror stuff. Um, and then it has, like, you know, the 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 fear element and like in the suit using Eddie for stuff and this kind of is as at least all the stuff we've read so far if you took this one four issue miniseries I would say if you've seen the movie and that was all you knew of Venom and you read this comic you'd be like oh okay well the movie got a lot of the tone right and it got a lot of the pacing right um, because it, even though it didn't take much from the story it still has that vibe. This comic right here has that vibe. So if you enjoyed the movie, I feel like you're going to really enjoy this comic book. Um, so in it starts, you know, it starts off with Eddie Brock and he's in a movie theater and he's doing that thing that, you know, a lot of us, you know, especially back in, back in the 90s, I used to do this all the time. I'd go see movies by myself and I'd hear people in the theater talking and, you know, and everything like that. And this is before cell phones got out of control or, you know, too many people had them, but people would just talk and, and you know, and, and just ignore the movie. And this, or they, if they hated the movie, they would just talk like they were at home on their couch. Uh, and it would get aggravating. And, and a lot of times you would say something and you would start something with somebody. And uh, Eddie kind of is in that position in this. The, the book opens up. He's watching Taxi Driver at like an old dollar theater. Um, he's eating popcorn 
He's just trying to kill some time again. He's still in New York. He hasn't gone back to San Francisco yet. And he's kind of trying to figure out where he's going to be, what, you know, what, what the future holds for him. He's lying low, especially because a lot of people are after him and stuff. Um, so he's, you know, he's at the theater. He's watching this movie. And he looks up on screen, and these guys come in, and they're talking behind him. And it starts to enrage Eddie, and it starts to enrage the suit. And something's happening to the suit. Eddie notices something a little bit different about it. It's, it's having these urges, these hungers uh, that he you know, that he hasn't really dealt with too much before uh, when it comes to this suit. So they kind of dive into the suit a little bit and, and like maybe what it was like on Clintar and what the atmosphere was like on Clintar. Uh, but we'll get into that here in a minute. So what we have here is we have Eddie Brock here and these guys prattle on and then he tells them to shut up and they want to start something with them. And so they come over and there's this great shot I'm going to put up on the screen here where Eddie turns and looks over his shoulder and his eye just no longer looks human and, it, and teeth are like coming up out of his, you know, from his mouth to his, like up to the side of his head to his jaw. And he's like, his skin is pulling apart and the symbiote's wrapping around him. And it's such an ugly, ugly image, but it's drawn so beautifully um, by, uh, by Ted Halstead and Scott Koblish, who's the inker on it. And Scott Koblish is a very, very good artist too. I've seen a lot of his work moving on after this, but Ted, I haven't seen too much of. So if anyone out there knows other things that Ted has done, let me know because I definitely want to explore more of his artwork and dig up some old issues that he drew because I thought he killed it on this Venom book. Um, so Venom turns around, he's like, you talking to me? And after that, you know, you see him in the sewer. Uh, he's like, you know, got, the guys ran away, got scared. He's in the sewer and he's like, okay, you know what? I didn't get to enjoy my movie. I'm tired. Uh, I'm just going to eat something real quick. I think he has a Twinkie and he tries to eat it and he, he spits it all out. So this is almost like the scene in the movie when he goes in and he grabs the mashed potatoes and he's like eating those and he's grabbing, you know, like old chicken out of the fridge and eating that. And he's like spitting it up and puking out. That's what's happening to Eddie. He's getting sick eating regular human food now. And the suit is craving something more. So Eddie walks around, you know, late at night, stumbles into a bar, literally crashes through a window, and uh, the guy's like, whoa, what the F was that? What's going on? And, uh, and then all of a sudden you see this great shot of the tongue coming in through the broken glass and dipping into a guy's beer, and it's, it says like splooge or something like that. And uh, the guys are like, what is this thing? And then Eddie comes in and seemingly, or uh, looks like the suit, bites a dude's head off. And Eddie even says, he's like freaked out by it. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, we've threatened to eat brains before. We've we definitely, you know, said we would do it, but we've never actually done it. Like, it's always been like a joke, you know, a way to scare people. But uh, but no, we've actually done it now. We've, we've broken into this bar, like smashed into this bar, and we killed a guy. So Eddie starts to pull the suit away and they start fighting and they're yelling at each other and Eddie's, uh, you know, they're, they're in it big time and, and it's like a relationship, you know, they're having the, their breakup fight and uh, the suit finally starts pulling away from Eddie and it's trying to tear every ounce of it out of him and he's screaming, no, don't do this, like, let's talk this out, let's figure out what's going on and the suit is just, uh, is not having it and it actually says, uh, it says, Eddie says, look, there's the one thing I didn't want to hear it say when it left me and it said it, it whispered it in my, my head, which is, you no longer have what I need. So it leaves Eddie just out in the alley and he's naked and he's alone and he's like whispering, no, please, no, please come back. Uh, so that's how the first issue ends. And I'm like, wow. And that locked me in. I was like, you know, it's been years since I've read this storyline. I remembered pieces of it when I was rereading it. But man, oh man, did I not anticipate uh, how much I was going to get into it again this time. Because like I said, it had a lot of things that I felt like the movie pulled from. And the movie primarily said it pulled from, you know, Lethal Protector and uh, and the Planet of the Symbiotes. But, I mean, I'll be shocked to learn that they didn't actually read this miniseries too because there's some things in there, like I said, uh, that the suit is, like, you know, wanting to eat stuff. Eddie can't process regular food anymore, and he's trying to figure out why. So then Eddie, without the suit, he gets locked up. Some guys find him. They put him in an insane asylum, and they're like, oh, he's crazy, and Eddie's in there with his tongue, like, sticking out of his mouth. He's like, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. He's like, uh, you know, th th there was another me there was a symbiote and it came from space and it was on spider-man that was on me and i was venom and they're just like yeah sure you're venom whatever buddy um and so they just kind of lock him up and uh you know just for the night to see you know what happens i guess they're gonna go check his like you know background see if he's possibly telling the truth but before they even really get to that eddie is starting to have these visions uh he's starting to he's you know psychically linked in a way to the suit still and so whenever the suit is going through like the sewers um and you can see all these like rats running by which is cool because obviously we're getting a lot of that in absolute carnage now where the rats are spreading the carnage virus and stuff um or the null stuff uh but then you have like the suit going through and it goes into a room and it sees a guy hitting his girlfriend and the suit just runs in and eats the guy and then it goes into an alley and there's a bunch of punks and they have guns and they're trying to shoot the suit and they think they kill it but then it gets up and it eats them too so while this is happening eddie's you know seeing this it's seeing the memories or the vision 
visions from, uh, you know, after it already happens, like after the suit eats somebody, the memories of it linger somehow back to Eddie and he can see what's going on just like a few minutes too late. And so he's like, I got to get out of here. The suit's making all these mistakes. Um, and he smacks this guy in the head and he finds out that really the people that ca caught him and put him in this insane asylum, there's actually a guy who's behind it all. His name is Dr. Payne or something like that. And he's like a total weirdo uh, who like eats brains. I think he even references Hannibal Lecter. He says something like, I got to thank Dr. Lecter for this recipe. And he's sitting there cutting a brain that he cooked um, and he's like eating it and stuff like that. So so he's just like kind of a corny bad guy um, and uh, and he's like watching Eddie through the security monitors and he's like you know this is kind of what I anticipated I kind of figured this is going to happen he's showing great strength so it looks like you know he's still a very strong human being a strong person um, you know that we shouldn't underestimate uh, but you know I kind of figured he would break out of here or possibly find a way to get out so he is but now I'll keep tabs on him I got like a tracker on him so I'm going to keep tabs and, and see if he'll lead me right back to the suit and so that's what Eddie does Eddie's like goes and like raids some places um, some weapons caches and stuff and he gets like flamethrower he gets like a, a like a sonic you know blaster that he can hold in his hand that'll send out like sonic waves and disruptors um, he's got like bright lights he's got all these things that he knows will hurt the symbiote and I love the scene where he actually goes in he's getting more memories of the symbiote and seeing where it was last and he's going to those areas to try to track it down and uh, and then he finally comes face to face with the symbiote and he brings a full-on attack to it you know he hits it with fire he hits it with sound he hits it with the lights and he even says like I I love the inner monologue of Eddie Brock here because he's saying like, you know, um, you know, when you're with somebody for a long time, they open up to you, they share your secrets or their, their secrets with you. And that and that's, you know, a good thing, you know, for, to build trust. But also if things ever go wrong during a breakup, you know, you can use those secrets against them. Um, because like, you know, the worst part of you is going to come out and you're going to try to hit them with everything you got to hurt them, to make them feel the way they made you feel. So it's a like clear, like, you know, Len Kaminsky has probably definitely been through horrible breakups and stuff. And he translated that into the storyline really, really well. Um, and this really builds on, if you're a big fan of that Eddie, you know, symbiote relationship, this is like a great storyline for that because this is a, a breakup story. Um, and then them trying to, you know, reconcile from the breakup. And Eddie comes in, he's like, you know, the ones you love hurt you the most. That's what I'm doing now. I know its weaknesses. It shared everything with me. So I know how to hurt it. And it's going to hurt even worse when I stab this thing in the back. Um, he goes, but I'm not here to kill it. He goes, I still love it. I still want it to take me back. Uh, so I am here hurting it, but it's only to open its eyes to this. And what he finds out is he finds this drug. So we've talked about this drug on the show before, and it's called uh, phenethyl phenethylamine. I think it's called. Uh, it's pronounced. It's a long word. Eddie can't even say it. He even says in the book, he goes, I can't even pronounce this word, but it's like a chemical in our brain that works with the central nervous system and it helps with mood and uh, and everything like that you can actually take it as like a supplement for weight loss if you want i think this is a real drug out there and it's also found in um, chocolate uh so this is kind of where that you know comes from a little bit uh where from the you know from the movie because you know in the movie it, like you know he feeds it chocolate and stuff like that and i think lobster i think lobster also has uh uh, fet uh, fet well, it's a phenethylamine. Fet it's a it's a very long word, and uh, and I keep forgetting how to say it. But it's like anyway that it's a chemical that really exists. It's in our brains. We produce it, but we can also take it as a supplement. But it's also in chocolate as well, and I think it's in lobster as well too. Um, but it is definitely in chocolate. And so Eddie shows up with like this little chemical that he stole from one of the, the labs he was in uh, that has the drug. And he's like, you know, I learned about, a lot about the suit. I learned a lot about the mind. You know, when I was in an insane asylum, I learned from Dr. Payne, you know, this guy's trying to take us down and everything. And he goes, and I... I brought some of this chemical to you. So now that he's weak in the suit, it's like starting to see clearly a little bit. And it's like, Eddie, what's going on? And it's like, here, he, Eddie's like, eat this. This is the chemical that you've been kind of siphoning slowly out of my brain all these years. But it, for all I know from your planet, this chemical is in your atmosphere. Like, I have no idea where you're from. I've never been to Clintar. We've just seen like, a, well, kind of, he was in Planet Symbiotes. He like did, went through the portal and stuff. But for the most part, he's like, I, you know, for all I know, this stuff is in your atmosphere. And or you siphoned it off of other hosts before, but you're on Earth now, and it looks like after all these like you know, maybe years or two, like two three years since you've been on Earth, um, you have not gotten enough supply of this stuff, and now you're it's driven you mad, it's driven you hungry because you have 
a lack of it. Um, so when you have none of this chemical in your mind uh, or in your body, uh, like the suit, if it's not nourishing off of it at all, uh, it has a similar effect that it has on the human mind, which it'll make you go rabid. It'll make you feed. It'll make you crave that chemical, um, you know, basically turn into a zombie where you'll want to eat other people's brains and stuff. So Eddie Brock reveals that to the suit. He says, look, I got to give you this chemical. Eat it, please. Trust me. It does, and then it falls back into Eddie Brock's arms, and Eddie's holding it, and he's like, you know, I, I promise I'll never let anything like this happen again to you. Um, I know that, uh, you know, that you need this stuff now. Um, you know, I'm not a very smart guy when it comes to, like, science and stuff, but now I've learned some things, and, and I'm here to help you. So, you know, please don't leave me again. And unfortunately, Dr. Payne shows up, separates them and captures the suit and then uh, leaves a bomb to try to blow up Eddie and then Eddie gets away luckily and then he tracks Dr. Payne back down to his lab where the suit is being held and as he's walking in Dr. Payne comes in and is like all right Eddie um you know you think you're a physical match for me I don't think so like I'm gonna take you down I've been eating brains and you know he's kind of a weirdo like that thinking he's getting more powerful and everything and so he takes a swing at Eddie and Eddie beats the crap out of him grabs his head starts smashing it into the glass and lets the suit out and then the suit gets out bomb with Eddie and Eddie goes up to Dr. Payne uh, and then actually as or as you know as Venom obviously and then goes up to him and sh sends some of the symbiote into his eyes and around his eyeballs and into his skull and up his nose and basically it went in and it drained all that uh, fluid out of his head all that chemical the phenethylamine it, it drained everything every ounce of it out of Dr. Payne's mind. So when it did that, Dr. Payne's like, what's going on? I'm dizzy. I can't, I can't think. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And, and uh, Venom goes, yeah, he goes, that's what you did to me. You, you, you found a way to trigger me, starve me from this stuff. Luckily, Eddie found out that I needed it, gave it back to me. So now we can think clearly again, but now you know how I was feeling when all your subjects that you were doing this to, all these different life forms that you were like sucking this, you know, chemical out of like me as a symbiote, other humans and stuff. He's like, now you know how it feels to not have it in your body. And so Dr. Payne starts losing his mind and there's other patients and people around and he just starts going to town and, and starts eating, like eating their brains uh, and eating himself to death, basically. And Eddie, as he's walking away with that sick sense of humor goes, yeah, uh, he's like, you want, you want medicine, doctor? Take two aspirin and call me in the morning and he walks out and there's like two guys left to eat and then Dr. Payne just starts going to town. So uh, then after that Eddie is you know back to kind of normal with the suit. They're thinking clearly again and he's walking around the streets. He sees a bum um, and he actually the guy's like begging him for money. Eddie ignored him before. Now Eddie's like you know what dude I got a dollar, you know, here, take the dollar. It's not a lot, but it's it's what I got. And then he does that, and, and it, you know, Eddie's carrying something. So you're like, whoa, what's he, what's he carrying? He drops the dollar off. I guess it was his change because what he finds out, he goes, you know, I also found out that this drug is, or this chemical is in chocolate. And he goes, so uh, I decided to get my, my true love uh, a little gift. And then the book ends with Eddie or Venom in the sewers, uh, you know, sitting on like a pile of garbage and stuff. And he pulls out uh, a Valentine's box full of chocolates, like heart chocolates and stuff. And then he just sits there and they just, you know, eat it together. Um, and uh, and then, you know, that's subsiding the, the suit in a way. So, yeah, I thought this was great. It's a great Eddie Brock, you know, symbiote relationship book. I thought it was really cool, very personal story. Um, and one with a lot of uh, really great tension, a lot of really great struggling in it. Um, it's not um, like a it blew my mind amazing, but it still was a really solid story. I think it, I would say this is probably my best or my favorite story in this graphic novel. Uh, and they saved it for last. So it's, they saved the best for last. And the, I would say the, the hybrid stuff is a very close second to this. Um, but this was fantastic. If you haven't read Venom the Hunger, I highly recommend it. I thought it was really fun and rereading it again. I actually read it twice. I read it once and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back through and read it again because I genuinely thought it was fun. I thought the, the art was really great. I think Ted's art uh, with Scott's inks and stuff, they added a lot of darkness to it. It felt like a very, it felt like a horror story, uh, a lot of this did. And, uh, and the themes in it were really dark. And even though Dr. Payne was kind of a generic villain, I did like how Eddie kind of got rid of him at the end. He gave him a taste of his own medicine. And then basically just he's locked in a room with these two guys and he eats them and eats himself to death, or I guess. I mean, maybe Dr. Payne's still out there somewhere, uh, but, uh, but it's left kind of ambiguous what happened to him. But he's definitely a raving lunatic eating people. So I can't imagine he lasted too much longer down there. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe one day they'll bring Dr. Payne back. Uh, but this was fun. I, I liked it a lot and I wanted to share it with you guys. And this is also the conclusion of our you know breakdown and discussion in-depth discussion of venom along came a spider so i hope you guys enjoyed
All right, that's it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching the show. I appreciate it. I know this is a long episode, but it was a four-issue series. A lot of the other ones we talked about were three issues or four, like, very boring issues, uh, like with Along Came a Spider. So this one I actually really liked. I thought a lot happened in each issue. You definitely got a lot of bang for your buck. And I would say this book is worth buying the graphic novel for just to get this story and the hybrid stuff, really. Um, although The Hunted is still kind of fun, too. Um, so I'm not going to totally, like, crap on that story. But Along Came a Spider, that's definitely the weakest in this lot. But we have one more big graphic novel to go. It's called Venom Tooth and Claw. So we're going to talk about a story called Tooth and Claw in there where it's Venom versus Wolverine again. Uh, then we have like a Venom versus Ghost Rider story called Sign of the Boss. Um, and then there's a couple other stories, License to Kill, and then like Finale and uh, the Venom Agenda or something like that. It's like a one shot. So those we'll all deal, you know, deal with probably next week or, or, you know, or into early August. And then once we get into early August or mid August, we're going to start diving into all the absolute carnage stuff. So we got a lot coming up on this channel. I got a lot of videos. I just got some news today. We saw that some you guys shared with me uh, from Hollywood Reporter we'll do in the next episode where Andy Serkis may actually be coming in to direct Venom 2 so that's going to be exciting so we'll talk about all that in the next episode and then I also got some new statues over here that you got you can't really see you can see Spider-Man there in the black costume but I have a Carnage one and we're going to talk about those in some upcoming episodes as well so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on a single thing and like share subscribe all that fun stuff let me know what you think of this book down below and we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much for watching the show as always I will see you in the future peace